Hello everyone and welcome to Hill Street. Today's story is, I laughed at the devil. If you end up enjoying this story, please leave a like. And if you enjoy hearing stories from me, please subscribe and become a resident of Hill Street and let me know how I'm doing in the comments. Now, let's get to this nightmare. Last month, my friends Ethan, Vanessa, and Ryan decided we would visit a supposedly haunted house on the outskirts of town. We brought with us a Ouija board, some candles, some booze, and I bought a gun because I hate feeling unable to defend myself. We're all in our early 20s, and a conversation in my apartment led me to proclaim, I will never believe in ghosts. They thought they would test my mettle by bringing me to a locally famous haunted site and conjuring the devil. I roll. I was ready for this challenge. I've never seen a ghost and I ain't afraid of no ghost anyways. Any ghost that was trying to test me was about to get busted for real. It was a lukewarm night being towards the end of September, but I still wore a jacket to conceal my peace. I was new in town and making friends is really hard for me, I hate to admit. I didn't want to scare them away, but I also survived a traumatic experience that makes me feel like protection is necessary. Ryan brought a squirt gun full of holy water because Ethan is extremely religious. Ethan must have thought that his good Catholic ways would give him some divine protection. He is super religious. He was only going as a sober driver and to make sure we were all safe, which is dorky but commendable. Vanessa drove and made a god-awful playlist of horror movie themes to try to wear down my tough guy facade. They played it for the whole half hour drive to the dilapidated haunted house where we were about to visit. At this point, I was stone sober and kind of realizing that I'm not the biggest fan of this friend group. As we approached the house, the sound of our vehicle approaching must have alerted the bats in the house because they came flying out of the broken windows like a Scooby-Doo scene. Zoinks! I grabbed the Ouija board and Ryan grabbed the candles. Vanessa grabbed the squirt gun and Ethan revealed the Holy Bible which he asked us all to touch before entering the house. We did no such thing and proceeded towards the house as he prayed or something. The door all but fell off the handle. I felt like the Incredible Hulk accidentally nearly ripping this door off the hinges. Inside it was quite dusty but it was much cooler than it was outside and actually Smelled nice. Maybe it was the candles. Devil! I yelled. This shocked Ryan, which made him drop the candles, one of which rolled under a table. Ha ha, Vanessa mocked. Ryan jumped like a little scared bunny rabbit. She continued to taunt. Sh shut up! Ryan retorted. At this point, Ethan was just waiting by the door with a flashlight. Well, shall we get started? I asked Vanessa and Ryan. Yes, Vanessa replied while doing a cheesy Count Chocula ass laugh. I laid out the Ouija board while Ryan set up five candles around the board. Suddenly, Ethan started playing. What You Won't Do For Love by Bobby Caldwell. It was his ringtone. 
total vibe killer. Sorry, he said. It's Nikki, his wife. Hey, babe. His conversation trailed off as he walked further outside the house. He had been holding the door open, and when it closed, the darkness kind of enveloped us all. Shall we imbibe? Ryan asked. Ah, crap. We forgot the booze in the car, I said. Screw it. Let's just make Johnny crap his pants so we can get out of here. The dust is stuffing my nose up, Vanessa said. All right, Ryan said, looking straight at me. Let's make you a believer, pal. Ethan, Vanessa hollered, to no response. He must still be on the phone, Ryan surmised. We're about to start the thing, Ethan, Vanessa yelled. There was no reply. In addition to seeming extra dark inside, it also seemed extra dark outside. I figured this must be due to our eyes adjusting, but still, it looked like we were all enveloped in darkness, each of us only visible by where the candle from the light hit our bodies. I put the cursor, or whatever, on the Ouija board and took a puff of my vaporizer. I blew the smoke over the Ouija board and said, All right, make me a believer. Ryan and Vanessa fell silent, which I was sure was part of their plan. With their heads oddly limp, their hands simultaneously quickly reached to the cursor thing. Wow. Great choreography, guys, I chuckled. Vanessa was really committing to this thing, but Ryan was starting to tremble a little. I put my hands on his kneecap. You all right, man? I asked Ryan. I noticed his knee was freezing cold, but he stuttered. I'm f fine. Vanessa's eyes looked black. I thought she must have put in black contacts or something. How dare you? She said in a low, oddly uncharacteristic voice. You would come into my stewardship and mock me? You are but a frightened worm. Yeah, that's what I'm doing, I mocked. Ryan looked at me. He must have put in black contacts too. You fool! One does not mock the master. Such insolence! Vanessa huffed. What do you bargain for? Fifty dollars, I said. Take it or leave it. I laughed. What do you bargain for your life? Ryan and Vanessa said in tandem. Hmm, let me think about that. How about the souls of Ryan and Vanessa? I replied. Witness, Vanessa asked Ryan. Do you bear witness to this exchange? I do, sire. Ryan replied in a wheezy voice. Then it's been wagered that you exchange the soul of these two mortals for your power. Sweet, pleasure doing business, I said. Suddenly, the candles went out and Ethan burst through the door, Bible in hand. Guys, are you okay? Ethan asked as he kneeled to Ryan's side, who passed out. What just happened? Vanessa asked. Nice try, guys, I said. But you can't pull a fast one on me. Who locked the door? Ethan asked. Not me, Vanessa said. Well, not me either, Ryan added. 
so the door was seriously locked just now. I asked, starting to feel a little uncomfortable. Ethan put his hand on his Bible. Yes, he said, looking dead in my eyes. I started to get a little headache then. What happened in here? Ethan continued. I'll explain it on the drive back, I assured everyone. Let's just get the hell out of here. We left the Ouija board and candles and got back in Vanessa's car. I explained everything the best I could as we got back to my place where we set up HQ. I'm waiting for the gotcha, guys, come on, I said. But I could tell they were all seriously concerned about what just happened. I feel like maybe they were just getting sick of me too and used the whole thing as an excuse to get me out of their friend group. I think you guys should visit the priest of my church sometime, Ethan requested. Vanessa and Ryan complied, but I don't believe in that oogie boogie stuff. You guys are playing the long con, huh? Fine. You're not going to scare me, I assured them. Ethan looked at me as serious as a heart attack right then. You should be scared, he said. Ryan was admitted to the hospital later that week. I'm not sure why. And Ethan and Vanessa have ghosted me. Now, I'm all alone in this town. But things have gotten much better for me since the whole thing. I won a scratch off for $50,000 last week. It pretty much changed my life. I saw Vanessa around town. She was looking haggard to say the least. We made eye contact and her face turned pale as tears flooded her eyes and she scurried off in the opposite direction. Just yesterday, I saw that her mom posted a GoFundMe to help with the cost of her breast cancer, which I gladly donated $5,000 to. As for Ethan, well, he's doing just fine, it would seem. I occasionally creep on his Facebook page as he's the only one who hasn't blocked me. He started a petition which he's trying to present to the city council to demolish that old building. I even signed the petition as a show of good faith, but I think they're all just being superstitious due to COVID and general germophobia. I was wearing my face mask in that house and none of them were. Maybe Ryan got sick from asbestos. He also didn't have the COVID vaccine and I'm no doctor, but I feel like it takes longer than a month for breast cancer to make a person as sick as Vanessa looked. Whatever happened, I still don't believe in ghosts. I literally laugh at the devil and I'm not worse off for it. I continue to remain in high spirits and good fortune as I write this. Just yesterday, I received an email that I've been accepted to an internship at a recording studio I've always dreamed of working at, where big artists are always coming through. I didn't acquire any powers that I didn't have before after all of this, but I know one thing for certain. Whatever happens, I'll be just fine.